Hey there, Matt. Hey, Wes. How's it going? Doing all right. So I went by the mail room, and it looks like Simitech has sent us some of their Similu products to take a look at. Fantastic. You know, I, I really like these products because this family has a wide degree of applications that you can use them in. I mean, just for instance, you know, they make all sorts of different sizes of these auto greasers. So 250 milliliter, 125 milliliter, 60 milliliter. Um, you know, pretty decent common. range there, yeah. Yeah, decent range there. But then they take it a little bit further. Some of the ones that you may not have seen before, 30 milliliter size, okay. and then one that is new to me, 15 oh. milliliter. Wow. Something incredibly small at that point. So, I mean, as you think about it, you know, these could go on pumps, motors, just general bearings, um, air handlers, a lot of different places you could use this family of Sure, products. a lot of different areas and a lot of different ranges. And That's it. with these guys specifically with single point lubricators, we typically look at a couple different types, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe with these specifically, they're electrochemical, right? They are electrochemical. So these are the ones that it's not a positive displacement pump, you know, with an electric motor or something. Mm -hmm. But these are the ones as you turn the dial, these two what look like watch batteries are exposed to each other and it basically produces a gas. As that gas pressurizes, it pushes this piston down, which in turn, pushes the grease out the bottom. Okay, so lower numbers we're looking at running fairly higher pressure early on, distributing more grease. That's right. Remove the number up to 12, 12 months or so. We're looking longer at longer life out of the, the greaser, lower pressure and sure. such like that. Yeah. Now, these are lower pressure, you know, uh -huh. I mean, it's, they're going to be able to push grease, you know, a, a little bit of distance and such like that. But I know something that you're excited about is they also sent one of the impulse units. <sighs> yeah, I do love these impulse units. So yeah. we oftentimes talk about these guys over here, right, in a good variety of range. Mm -hmm. and we talk about specific applications, but sometimes if we think about those 250s or those 125s, we're limited on the space we have, right? That's Big right. confined spaced areas. And we, we may be able to pop these guys out a couple of feet, sure. which is great, but sometimes we're still limited. Great application to be able to utilize this impulse unit, right? Mm -hmm. We put this guy, throw it directly on top of one of these guys, and we extend that from two or, so, two or so feet up to about 10 or 12 feet. Right, so. extends the range that we can actually push the grease. Yep. As we know, some things you know aren't safe to, to get close to while it's operating. Some machines move a lot and bounce around, and we don't want the lubricator to break off, so we have to mount it remotely. The impulse gives us yeah. much longer That's range of Boosting piping. that, yeah, Boost exactly. it, the grease goes in, it just pushes it at a little bit higher pressure. Sure. You know, good thing about the, the Similubes is they've done a lot of work for us, you know, cross-referencing different bearings, different motors to help you size and spec exactly what lubricator to use. And it sounds like you've already done this as well. Yeah, yeah I was actually looking at that when you walked in, you know, uh, they've got a good little breakdown of exactly where and which type to use. So for this application here, we're looking at a very common 25 horsepower motor sure. running about 3,600 RPMs. So for the inboard bearing, mm -hmm. might be a little bit different from inboard versus outboard, but for the inboard bearing we spec'd out for this guy right here based off of their information, a 125. 125, so we'll take the, the 125 greaser and you're gonna attach it to the bearing housing on the inboard side of the motor. Exactly, right. So we've got a couple other things we're putting on here, an adapter itself, as well as an extension. Sure, Yeah. So because we, think we know those things can be hard to get to. Yeah, so. exactly, right, yeah. Putting this guy on here, sometimes they're recessed. We run into issues with that. So making sure we pop this up a little bit to keep it out of the guard of the coupling, mm -hmm. as well as being able to view it for inspection. Right? Sure. Now you mentioned adapter, and that is one thing that the, the Similu products, they have a wide range of adapters. Because we know not all the, the fittings are going to be standard, some are going to be metric, the sizes, it can be frustrating. Yeah. So they take a lot of that away from you, they have them available sure. for trying you. Trying to minimize having to go back and forth from the Luber or the storeroom, trying to figure out what components you need. That's exactly right. Now the more I think about that 15 milliliter greaser, I'm excited because there's a lot of opportunities for that. You know, if you had a small bearing like this, something that you would normally treat as run to failure, you're not going to maintain it. You're not going to go out there and grease it, even though it may only need a shot a month. Sure. You've only got so much time and effort and everything like that. Well, what we can do is convert that from run to failure to give it as long a life as possible is converted to using an auto greaser. So basically making sure that we have the right adapter, we put this 15 milliliter product on it, we thread it onto the housing, and if you do the math and you set that at about 12, that's roughly a shot of grease a month for that bearing. Nice. So now it's going to run cooler, it's going to be more reliable, not yeah. going to have as many failures. You're basically extending your program without increasing manpower, right? That's so exactly great it. fit for this application, great little use for this guy right here. That's it. Now, also about these single point lubricators, you know, they are low pressure and they're not blowing seals, pushing grease into windings and such like that, but they are filling all the voids in the cavity. So that's going to keep it pressurized and keep contaminants out 
of the bearing, not going to yeah. allow them to come yeah, in. Yeah, that's a great fit. We oftentimes think about oil and reservoirs putting positive pressure air. Yep. Similar application for this, right? We're basically establishing a positive pressure in that void. That's right. Now, you've been to a lot of plants like I have, and you know that when you see people grease things, they don't always do it correctly. Either. Sure, we run into issues of not wiping off the fittings or the couplers themselves, a bunch of contaminants building up on the end of those. That's so. right. And then that gets forced into the bearing when we regrease it. Sure. By using a single point lubricator, we remove that application induced contaminants from the system right there. That's so a yeah, good application for that. Another thing I look at too with these single point lubricators is minimizing issues when we look at troubleshooting. So mm -hmm. vibration background, looking at checking vibration on this guy right here, it's a little bit elevated. First thing I want to look at, if it may be a concern for lack of lubrication, so we might regrease. Grease yeah, exactly. One thing we might run into is sometimes lubricant can act as basically a masking agent, right? So we relubricate this. If we're not cognizant of that, cognizant of that, we may forget to go back the next day or two and see is this vibration stayed low That's right. or is it ran back up. So, so you have to check it. Exactly. And with this guy right here, if we're using these single point lubricators, we basically eliminate that variable from the troubleshooting application. That's right. So it helps dial in the precision of your troubleshooting because it removes that masking. Sure. Now speaking of you know diagnostics and such, that impulse unit that we talked yep. about, it actually has diagnostic lights. Exactly. It's yeah. got green flashing lights that tell you, you know everything's good and it's happy. Red flashing lights say you know there's a problem. It actually has a lot of different failure codes, but it can be used as a quick go no go. You can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. inspect it from a distance, make sure that it's operating correctly. Sure, just a good little feedback mechanism, right? That's exactly yeah. it. For more information on these products, please visit the link below. Sign up.